This is a sort of addendum to my previous uh, video on in painting and uh, I did sort of very exact in painting in the first version so I thought I, I would do um, inexact <laughs> in painting uh, which is like you know changing an object within an image um, a, a great deal restyling an image that you don't want to do it in bit bit by bit so in the previous one I changed um, a robot's um, material it was made of which was changing parts of the parts of the robot exactly so that it was made of different materials and different parts and in a further bit I I changed the the dress on on um, on a character but changing a large object in uh, or the large subject actually in a large landscape quite high resolution landscape is another matter so I when I did this I was, I was quite pleased with this but the, I, I would like the cast I love the um, atmosphere and tranquility of all this but, but I want a castle really that clashes that isn't tranquil at all a sort of insertion of uh, insertion of nastiness in a tranquil landscape so to that end I want to um, update this castle but update it comprehensively not just a little bit but I won't don't want the landscape to change so the way I've gone about this is is pretty simple and, and very similar to the way I did it last time but with a few alterations um, for adjusting how it drops into the final image so as this is very high resolution this is my final um, up, upscale here which is um, 4,000 pixels across I want to take out just my castle and I want to take out a bit that has a, a fair bit of um, uh, room around the edge of it and it's important that none of this is too near the edge because uh, that will cause problems if it is and then as this is still a very large image it's uh, 1920 I don't really want to process it at that size um, I want to down res a bit and then refine it up afterwards. So that goes into a very straightforward image to image. And it goes in with the original Lauras that made the, uh, the image on the left here. But I add one here, which is Mechanicus, which is a sort of, uh, <laughs> I don't know, devil worshipping steampunk. <laughs> Is the nearest I get, and I merely put that through an through an image to image with a with a pro, an appropriate prompt. So some of the prompt, the morning light, etc., really only the morning light is from the original image, and you have to have that in because if I change the time of day, uh, the sky is going to change. If I don't change the time of day, it's not going to change the sky. It's going to leave it pretty much the same. And as you see. At quite a high denoise at 65, you can experiment with the denoise. Obviously, if you have a high denoise, it might start changing the sky too much. Uh, there are ways of fixing that, which we'll hit later, because there was a small change. But uh, we'll we'll see, you'll see how I how I uh, wangled my way around that. Anyway, so from that generation, that's the result. And as you see, the castle has become considerably more forbidding which is just what we wanted so the next part is to join up the dots so here is my image coming in and i'm upscaling with an upscale model which is doubling the size and then i'm resizing it down to the size that will fit in so i'm resizing it down go over here to the original size of this i i could put some math nodes in that'll do that automatically Quite honestly, I don't think it's worth it. You're, you're transferring a couple of numbers around. So that has to, this has gone back to 1920 and the two times model has sharpened it all. So it's crisped up. So then the job is to get it in to the original image. And that is actually surprisingly simple. All I do is open mask editor and paint over the areas I want to change so I'm leaving that tower I'm leaving this bit of landscape it has a bite out of it because that bit didn't fit and the nice thing about this method is after you've done the generation you can mess about with this you can take
take bits out and put bits in and correct and which is just what I did here I had a um, a uh, mismatch here in this area so all I did was paint it out and now the join is in this bit of landscape here which no one cares about and if you go in you might be able to find a join it's quite hard to find a join there's one there do you see that stuff in there but I'm not too fussed to be honest there should be another one here but it doesn't show and of course you can well there's one there it's too, <laughs> actually funny hard to find one see one here which I could correct uh, just by adjusting the mask I thought this was a glitch but it wasn't now there was one thing uh, this bit of sky had changed uh, it was a little tiny bit darker this bit of sky so you can actually make very fine adjustments to that I altered the brightness by three points in the colour correct. So that's correcting this image. And that fixed it completely. It, it didn't show at all anymore. So <clears throat> the thought occurred to me, what if I send that round again? Will it become even more steampunky? Well, we'll have to wait and see. It should be more difficult. It shouldn't work, but it might work. We never know. So we're going to have a go. I wouldn't think you can send it around many times, but you might be able to send it around one small time. So here it is back, and uh, I changed a few things. <laughs> I, uh, I changed it to a factory. Now that's going to cause trouble. So uh, you can see uh, it's it's very, very, very changed now. Uh, let's see how it joins in. Well, there you go. We have a factory. So what we can do, and we have some, some oddities, and not as many as you might expect. So there's something a bit strange there, which, and that could be an adjustment there. <laughs> this join here is uh, astonishingly good. Is there anything in the skyline? Is that practically nothing? I can't really see anything. So the the, the nastiness occurs in this foreground here. I don't mind that, but uh, that's a bit strange, isn't it? So let's see if we can we can correct that foreground bit. And. Uh, that shouldn't look all right. And that doesn't look too good, does it there? Okay, so we go to our mask editor. And the areas... Now, you've, got, you've actually got a couple of choices here. I could... You can either um, redraw the mask, which is what I think I'll do. Which it only takes a moment to redraw. Or you can adapt this one. So I'll adapt this one just looking at the areas I might want to do. So if you have a little compare... So that area there, shall we do that area there as, as that area, that area, how that building fits in doesn't look too good, does it? So so if we take a, a little lump around here, I think that'll work. But uh, if I was doing it for real, I would uh, load this image into here and remake my mask. But uh, seeing as this just to, sh just to show, this will be fine. So I want to add that area there, don't I? A bit. I might want to add a little bit there. <laughs> and there was something wrong with the building over here, wasn't there? I think we'll have another bit there. <laughs> and there's a bit here. We'll have a little bit of that. Right there. <laughs> I'm guessing here. And the great thing with this method is I haven't I haven't got to wait. So let's watch those areas as it changes. There we go. That's pretty good. But. And this has got a lot better. Look, this this is all fine now. I want to cut it away there. Let's have a look. Yeah, so here we could cut it away a bit. We want to add a bit. Think about that. This can come right down. Okay, and let's see if that made a difference. Yeah, it'll be around there. The change. And there we go. That's pretty good. I think we're all pretty good. Actually. Could be a bit around there. I think you get the drift anyway. It's very adjustable, and you don't have to re, you don't have to regenerate it. And I could come in and go back to the other one in any area here I wanted. So, uh, so it would be easy enough to uh, erase bits of this to reveal. Um, I will try and do that. So what I'll do is I have two monitors, so I'll. Um, I'll put the uh, under. Unfortunately, mask editor almost completely hides what's underneath. So uh, I need a guide to show me where I'm going. So let's try and turn this corner of the building back. 
And as again, because you're doing it in Mask Editor, so it's this building here, isn't it? Uh, so what we do, we remove that bit. And if you follow, um, if you follow actual objects around, they won't have changed that much from from one to the other. I think that's pretty cool. I quite like that doorway that was in here as well. Let's have that. There was a, a spooky doorway there. Save today. Let's go up here and see what happens. There you go. Isn't that fun? And it all fits in absolutely perfectly. Now one more wrinkle in this workflow that occurred to me after I made the main uh, video. So the uh, interface has changed slightly, the workflow has changed slightly, but not to any degree. I had a thought that uh, maybe I want my castle to be a, a completely different shape. Um, and could I do that? So uh, the answer is you can. And uh, it's just the only change to the workflow, and you can see this pretty clearly, there's nothing exciting in these nodes really. So if you look at this, if you screenshot this, you should be able to uh, work out what I've done. I wanted a bit more castle. so. So, because uh, I want a bit more cast over there. So uh, what I've done is very, very simple. I've um, cut a bit of noise out here. This is a just a patch of noise. Just you can make that in Photoshop. I've I've informed people elsewhere how to make that. It's pretty simple. I'll just say it again. It's it's a 1024 square of 50% grey in Photoshop and the noise is overlaid at 30% which makes uh, a patch of noise like this. So we take our patch of noise, we cut out a bit of it with the mask here. Very simple, very rough shape of the of roughly how we want our, um, our extension, castle extension, that's what I should call it, to go. And uh, I've adjusted it to be approximately the brightness of the overall. If you um, if you squint at this image, uh, then your new patch should look more or less the same tone. Now that that's that seems to work the best. And then it's uh, it's a really simple uh, composite where I've dropped a bit of noise onto the castle, as you can see here. So the bit of noise comes in top left. So I've moved it across three thousand pixels and down three uh, six hundred and fifty-eight, which puts our patch of noise there. So that's what it looks like and then when we cut that after this it's exactly the same nothing has changed after this so there's our patch of noise in our cropped section the original image that it's been composited over is this one here you, you could use this one but i think this one this one is um is cleaner in this area so i think it's better to put it over a very clean area than uh, anything that's got building in it already. So if you if you understand what I mean, you are, we've all, we've got stuff here if we take it from here. So this is a clean area that it'll be dropped on top of, and from there it proceeds exactly the same way. No difference at all. I've uh, it, this looks a little different, but um, if you if you uh, if you select a group of nodes, I'll show you here. And you go convert to group node, and we'll call that uh, image pre. Then it'll it'll join all those nodes up into uh, into one. Isn't that nice and neat? <laughs> so that's what I've done. So it's the same workflow that you'll download. And uh, if you want to work out how things happen, then that's the best way to look at it anyway. But uh, once you understand everything, you can tidy everything up. And I like tidy. <laughs> So anyway, so with an adjustment to my mask here, this is the result. A new bit of building, an extension. And as you see, it fits in absolutely perfectly. Okay, I hope that was, all that video was uh, interesting and uh, I hope uh, you have fun with it. Uh, thank you very much for watching.